war in Ukraine approaching the one-year mark. We wanted to talk with the Ukrainians who are living the waking nightmare of Putin's war every day and every night. Residents who try to sleep despite the frequent blasts in those frontline towns in eastern Ukraine. Our chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, spent two weeks there traveling through these besieged communities. While the scars of war may look the same everywhere, each town and their people have a different story. Go, okay. our kids inside. Climbing up to the train and into the narrow passage of the sleeper car in the blitzed city of Kherson, we were greeted with those smiles. Their teacher tells us there are 96 of them in this car, headed to safety in Ukraine's west. Once a thriving city, Kherson is no longer a place for kids, says the man who helped liberate this place. I mean, there's artillery constantly. Would you say that Kherson is safe for the people? No. No. No, very, very dangerous. Earlier this month, we spent two weeks driving 700 miles along the front lines from Kherson in the south to the Bakhmut area in the east to Izium and Kharkiv in Ukraine's north. Finding once thriving towns still held by Ukraine, but now firmly in the grip of Putin's war. In Dnipro, this neighborhood turned into a fireball. <laughs> A Russian missile obliterating this apartment block on a Saturday evening. Then east to the towns around Bakhmut, Western officials saying the slaughterhouse there has churned out tens of thousands of casualties. This drone video showing barely a wall left standing. Fires still smolder at apartment blocks. It's been the bloodiest battle of the war, and it's estimated that more people have died or been wounded in Bakhmut than ever lived there. As night fell and the guns thundered in the distance, we saw him, the boy with the bright eyes, carrying that box. His name is Bogdan. <laughs> his dog sniffing around him and his friends, and in his arms, the kid's version of war booty. Does it ever scare you? Do bombs or shells ever hit here? Yeah. Yeah. He offers to show us where he lives. No, meter of sto. Outside on the street. Oh, so you're actually outside on the street when the shell hit here? Because it be. No, we were in the school, we were in the school, and we were running. No, first we were going, then the first plane hit the earth, and the snow was falling. Then the second plane hit the earth, and the snow was falling. No, we were lying. He said he dusted himself off, picked the glass from his hair, and went home. So we're still miles away, but however. Driving through these towns, we see Soviet-era cars stuffed tight with soldiers moving to the front line. The need for tanks and just general military vehicles, unmistakable. On the nearby town of Chasev Yar, on muddy roads, another ghost town. We meet the mayor, Sergei Chaus, who's offered to take us to his neighborhood. But first, the body armor. Let's go ahead. We'll go ahead. Thank you. We drive a few minutes across town, arriving in the neighborhood of identical Soviet-era apartments. So this is the neighborhood where the mayor lives. Uh, it's in these buildings. He doesn't live here anymore because it's no longer safe, and you can hear the constant incoming and outgoing of these shells. Go inside. You can hear the constant thudding on the outside. The mayor greeting the matriarch here, Uliana, and her family. They just said 24 hours a day. Has it gotten worse? Yeah. Cots line the walls, the air smoky and stale, and despite the leftover Christmas decorations, the mood is grim. As we talk, in the corner we see that Grandmother Uliana's eyes well up. I'm so sorry. She says she's lived most of her life in this town. Factories have opened and closed, but she stayed. I mean, the, the constant shelling, the constant bangs. Are you able to sleep at night? Do you live in fear? Yeah, 
And beside her, that little girl clutching her flashlight. What is your name again? Dasha. 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 What do you miss from before the bombs? I miss daycare and people, she tells me. That cellar providing safety, but also isolation. Further west in Izium, the fighting ended months ago. The war still lingers. Out there in the streets, an elderly woman approached us. Her name is Ludmilla, her German shepherd, Dan. She wanted to show us her home and what's left of her life here. It's hard to imagine that this is livable, but you can tell that someone had lived here for a long time. Now, Ludmilla says that had she been in this room when the ceiling came in, she might have been killed. And what's unmistakable is how cold it is in here. It's actually colder than it is outside. And she showed us where Ukrainian soldiers took up positions in the apartment next door. So Ludmilla says that this is where the Ukrainian soldiers were hunkered down, and you can see the energy drinks on the floor and also the effort to try to block the blown out windows even using a chair back and an ironing board to try to keep the wind out. Why does she stay here? Ludmilla speaks with the stubborn intensity of the lonely. She gets daily handouts of food and she visits with friend. Also, she says she talks to Dan, but she admits it's not much of a life. The towns seem to look the same. The story's different. Back in Konstantinivka, Bogdan shows us to his apartment building. We climb the stairs and he runs ahead and warns his mom of the uninvited guests. Hi, Matt. Hi, hello. Hello. Sit down, please. Thank you, Elena. She says she tries to be an example for her son and explains why they stay. The short answer is duty and family. The war has also taught Bogdan another skill, perhaps unique to 12-year-olds in the war zone. But your reality is that you've become an expert in the sound of artillery and explosions. A few days ago, Konstantinivka shelled again. We heard two children were wounded, but Bogdan telling us he's okay and even shooting video from the scene just a few hundred yards from his apartment. And back in Kherson, with those kids on the train, I asked them what life will be like in the West without all the bombs. It's going to be normal, they say, like before the war. Bye, Bye you guys. Bye, guys. It was time to go. Last call. They wave and snap pictures through the smudged windows. And the train rolls out towards the setting sun westward. And for these teenagers, refuge. We thank Matt so much for that. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.